everything's fine Wouldn't expect any more from this The situation's in line With every story that I heard Of the burning bliss and I Back in May, earlier this year, I said I would commit to the challenge of documenting my life for a year. I'm gonna vlog every week. And while a bunch of crazy things have happened since then, I also haven't been doing the best job at keeping up with the challenge. Sorry about that. But you're here, so welcome to another week documenting my life. I mean, you haven't missed much. It's autumn, the leaves are turning, and I've been suffering from a dreadful, horrible writer's block. When I set out to romanticize my life more and document it, I wondered if and when there would ever be a week where I would have to deal with this sort of thing. I've been in a creative rep for the past few weeks and today, today that's gonna change. Creative on demand is an interesting thing, but I do think that it is possible to facilitate creativity, or at least try. First thing that I do when I feel like I'm caught in a little bit of a rut is to see if I actually am spending enough time outside. Uh, the past few weeks, I've literally been rotting in my office, trying to just get over my writer's block, but yeah, that wasn't working out. Spending time in nature, away from my computer screen, away from the pressure of coming up with ideas actually tend to help a lot. I guess that's why they say the best ideas come when you're the most relaxed. I do believe that's true. Routine, mundaneness, or too much comfortability can make us a little complacent. Seeking out new experiences every now and then, or breaking our routine, can be helpful and refreshing. We don't necessarily need to do grand gestures every time we need to switch up our routines. These things can be simple. A walk in nature, visiting a local shop, rearranging your furniture, a bit of change here and there can help us think differently and notice things that we otherwise wouldn't. Sometimes it may seem like a waste of time, doing all these little things of seemingly little importance. But if we're always fixated on the big things in our lives, chances are we'll spend a large portion of our time dissatisfied. I ordered these fake candles on Amazon. I've been seeing them everywhere. Just open them and it's pretty impressive. So basically they're battery powered, which I didn't know and which is a problem because they don't actually have batteries. But they kind of look like this and they come with like different sizes. And then you can have a remote. I bought these to go on top of my fireplace here. I've always found it important to make sure I have a space that constantly is inspiring me when I wake up in the morning. I also work from home, so I try to put in extra effort to just make sure my space is always inspiring me. And it's just like the little joys, you know? I have accumulated my house stuff throughout the years. It definitely wasn't all at one time. I feel like building a space takes such a long time, at least for me. I don't like to rush into decisions, but I feel like environment design is something that's really important to me. So let me show you what I'm thinking about these things. Cause I have candle holders up there, but they have real candles. Ooh, do you see? Sorry. 
Do you see that vision? I also have to add that I am genuinely feeling a little bit better. I feel like after being in such a state of just not really having any progress with my creative projects, just doing other things in general. <laughs> I don't know if these would count as productive things, but I'm just doing things to move forward. I'm starting to feel a little bit better, so that's my update. <laughs> I also picked up this book. It's called The Creative Act. I have seen it everywhere. Everybody's reading it. And I caved and I bought it. The first page says, the object isn't to make art. It's to be in that wonderful state which makes art inevitable. Love it. All right, so I think that I'm just gonna clean up a little bit more in here and then I'm gonna go start this book. Definitely, I won't be able to finish it today, but I think, I think it's a good day to start. Every now and then, I'll dedicate a period of time where I'm solely learning new things and absorbing a bunch of different mediums, purely research with no pressure to create. Then, when I'm ready to make something, I'm drawing from that well of inspiration I filled up on. Have several different influences and see what speaks to you. From poetry to music to art, you never know what you'll find and what will inspire your next idea. One of my favorite ways to start feeling inspired to create is discovering new music. Music is so integral to my storytelling and my overall style. It informs the tone and the pacing of the scene in the edit, and I just love when I find a track that I know I'm gonna use in a future video. A lot of you ask me where I get the music for my videos from, and my go-to is always Epidemic Sound. What I like about Epidemic Sound is that they have a huge library of genres, curated playlists, and sound effects, which I use all the time. You can also check out my creator playlist on their site, The Life of Reza Soundtrack. I personally curated this playlist with their team and I include some songs that I've used in my videos. This is how you can use music in your videos without worrying about copyright. Actually, when I first started my YouTube journey, they were the first music platform that I ever signed up for to license music for my videos. And a couple years later, I got my own playlist on their site. That's a full circle moment. The personal plan is perfect for content creators, but they also have a commercial plan if you are a freelancer. I love Epidemic Sound. I've been using them for ages, so I highly recommend them. And they hooked it up. If you use the link in my description, you can get a free 30-day trial. So thank you, Epidemic Sound. What I've realized on this creator journey so far is that making stuff often requires a lot of letting go, of control, of perfectionism, even sense or expectations. All the times where I came up with my best work were the times where I had to let go of this idea of what's supposed to work and instead focused on something I was curious about or what was missing from all the things I already loved. I'm quickly realizing what goes into this creator thing. There's definitely times for hard work and late nights, but there also has to be time for curiosity and play. So I'm about 50 pages into this book and it's speaking my language. So far, it's pretty great. Very relatable. I only got about 50 pages in, but within that, there was just so much things that I could relate to. And I wish I started this earlier. I needed this like three weeks ago. Well, there goes my very ordinary day in life. Did it work? I guess so. Anyways. Good luck to you if you're trying to find inspiration. Thanks for watching.